Today, we're going to dive into a really cool way to extend your system memory in your Proxmox home server by using Intel Optane SSD storage as ultra fast swap space. If you're running into memory limitations in your home lab, maybe using a board with SODIMM memory, this trick could save you from expensive or even impossible RAM upgrades if you're completely maxed out in a mini PC. So let's dive into seeing how we can configure Intel Optane storage for ultra fast swap space and Proxmox. Well, memory is almost always the bottleneck in home lab setups, especially when running virtual machines on mini PCs. Even with today's 48 gig DDR5 SODEMs, you're maxing out at 96 gigs of system memory. 128 gig SODEMs are on the horizon. They have yet to hit the market and they will likely be ultra expensive. So what if you're out of system memory and you still want to run more resources? Well, this is where Intel Optane SSDs come into play. Optane drives are built for ultra endurance and ultra low latency. Unlike NAND SSDs that have to move data around in the background to write changes, Optane writes data in place and this helps to keep performance incredibly high and latency super low. Now that makes them perfect for high speed caching scenarios, swap space, or even memory tiering in virtualization environments. Intel Optane SSDs are built for extreme endurance for high write cycles. They are really built to not wear out when it comes to write operations. They have super low latency, faster than traditional NAND SSDs, and they have super high IOPS performance which is certainly great for caching and swap space. Now, I have used Intel Optane drives as a cache tier in VMware vSAN environments, and also recently I've been experimenting with using it also for NVMe memory tiering, and the performance has been absolutely incredible. So with many saying that VMware's NVMe memory tiering is just a fancy swap space, I wanted to see just how well Intel Optane drives perform as system swap for a Proxmox VE server. Can we essentially extend our system memory in Proxmox using Intel Optane? Now, you may wanna know about the hardware. For this setup, I'm using an Intel Optane 280P U.2 drive with 280 gigs of storage. You can find these for super cheap on eBay or even Amazon. Even the 980 gig versions are also to be found on eBay for not that much. Since most mini PCs don't have native U.2 slots, I'm using an NVMe to U.2 adapter to connect it to an M.2 slot on my Minisforum BD-795M motherboard that was featured in my Proxmox home server build for 2025. Once installed, we can configure Proxmox to use this drive for swap space and extend essentially our system memory or make the system feel like it has more system memory than we truly have installed physically inside the box. So I wanna show you how this cable adapter kit plugs into the U.2 drive, the Intel Optane drive. So here we've got the U.2 connector, plugs into the Intel Optane drive. Then it has the standard SATA power cable that you can actually plug one of your SATA power cables into to power the device. And then it goes to the M.2 NVMe adapter. So you just simply plug that in and then your U.2 drive is ready to go. Now let's configure our Intel Optane SSD as Proxmox swap space step by step. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the summary of our configured swap space. And this is just the default swap storage space that's out of a fresh Proxmox VE server installation. As you can see, it's eight gigs in size. So now what we're going to do as well is look at the Etsy FS tab file. And you can see that this storage space is configured out of the box as well. What we want to do is we're going to turn off the default swap storage and the dash a just means that it turns off every bit of storage that is configured for swap so we're turning that off as we want to only use our intel optane storage here we see the disk 260 gigs in size is the optane drive now what we're going to do is use the make swap command and designate this entire drive as swap storage the drive has been designated as swap storage in the configuration using the make swap command 
Now what we're going to do is turn on the swap functionality for this designated Intel Optane hard drive. So we just simply pass in the dev NVMe 0 and 1 to turn on swap storage. Now we can once again view the summary of the swap on command and we should be able to see that our Intel Optane storage is now the swap storage designated. And we can see that it is with 260 gigs of size. Now we want to make this persistent. So we're going to echo in the dev NVMe 0N1 as the line inside of our Etsy FS tab file. We're going to comment out the default swap storage so that it doesn't try to load and instantiate upon a reboot. And then we see at the very bottom of the file, our new configuration. So once again, if we do free dash H, we can see our system memory and our swap storage. So let's talk about swappiness. Yes, that is a term, swappiness. So by default, Proxmox, like other Linux variants, has a swappiness value of 60. So we want to actually make that more aggressive. Now, why? Well, some will actually talk about disabling swappiness, and this is so that they can get all of the memory pages inside of their physical memory, and so that Proxmox doesn't unnecessarily use the swap space. However, in this use case where we have ultra-fast Intel Optane, and we know that we have a RAM-starved system, we want it to be very aggressive on the swappiness, or in other words, its tendency to put pages into our swap storage on our Intel Optane storage. So let's look and see how we actually adjust this value. We use the command sysctl-w vm.swappiness equals the value that you want to set. And I started with a value of 75 to begin with. Then we can look at the value just to make sure it committed with sysctl vm.swappiness and it will return that. Here we're actually making this a persistent value by echoing this in the sysctl.conf file. We can make this change available immediately with the sysctl-p command. We can see it returns the 75 value. There's another setting that we want to enable for our Proxmox VE server, the vm.page-cluster setting in Proxmox. And this setting controls how many pages which a page is four kilobytes in size each. And it controls that size in which the Linux kernel tries to read and write to your swap space at once. Now the default value is set at three, which means that Linux will swap in and out two to the third power, which equals eight pages at once. Now Optane can handle high IOPS efficiently and doesn't need this batching operation due to the performance that it's able to achieve. So setting the vm.page-cluster setting to zero forces Linux to swap only one page, four kilobytes at a time instead of bundling these together. It makes sure that if you have latency sensitive workloads, high memory VMs, databases, those types of things, using that zero setting is preferred. And it makes sure you have near RAM speed response from swap. And that takes advantage uh, certainly of Optane's super low latency. So here we are echoing in the vm.page-cluster equals zero to the sysctl.conf file. We can see it returns the zero setting and we're going to simply select this sysctl-p we can see the swappiness setting as well as the page dash cluster equals zero setting. So I'm logged into my Proxmox virtual environment interface. And as you can see, I'm running Proxmox 8.3.3, which is the latest with patches as of the production of this video. And what I have configured here is I've got my Proxmox home lab server build for 2025. As you guys can see, I've got the 32 threads of the AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX processor. And I've only got 48 gigs of memory installed. And that's made up of a 32 gig DDR5 SODEM module as well as a 16 gig DDR5 SODEM module. So not the optimal configuration, differing sizes there, but I thought it'd be a great test of maybe not even optimal memory configuration and very little memory when we're talking about a virtualization host that we can show just how effective this Proxmox swap memory can be. And as you can see here, I have the Intel Optane storage, 260 gigs as we went through the walkthrough of how to provision in that and that is correctly showing up as our swap space for Proxmox. 
Now, how did I saturate this memory? What I did was I created a template with Ubuntu Server 2404 LTS and then just simply cloned that for 15 virtual machines. Now, what I did is I configured each of these first few virtual machines with 16 gigs of memory. Then I installed the MemTester utility and what I did was I launched the MemTester utility for 14 gigs of memory. So I launched the command MemTester 14 gigs zero. And what that does is runs a battery of tests against this 14 gigs of memory. And I did that on the first machines here. So one, two, three, four, and I think I went through virtual machine six. Now, what I did find was that MemTester started erroring out when I did that same test for seven and eight, and I haven't spun up nine through 15 as of yet. But I think what accounts for that is that MemTester does not work with swap storage. So it has to be physical memory before that utility will work. So it makes sense that it started airing out as I saturated that 48 gigs roughly of available memory that was being used. Now what you see in the Proxmox host makes sense. We've got our RAM usage at essentially 100% of our available memory and then as you can see we're starting now to spill over into that swap storage which is what i wanted but i wanted to run this test to show you guys just how responsive this proxmox host is even though we're fully saturated with 44 48 gigs of memory and i have these additional virtual machines configured with 16 gigs of memory and i want to show you just how responsive the proxmox host still is when i power on these additional virtual machines. So we can bump this one up to 16 gigs of memory, bump this one up as well to 16 gigs of memory. And you can see just how well this Proxmox server is handling the additional virtual machines that are provisioned on this host. So I'm gonna to continue to edit the memory. We're gonna bump this up to 16, get all 15 configured for 16 gigs of memory. And let's power these on now. And we're going to fully make use of this Intel Optane storage. So let's go back up to our host and we can probably see this swap starting to increase just like we imagine. So we're in around 40 gigs of memory space on this swap storage. So essentially what you're getting with the speed of the Intel Optane storage is an additional 40 gigs of memory on top of this 44, 48 gigs of memory. And I think for home lab hosts, this is an incredible way to make the most out of your investment. If you are fully saturated on your memory, let's say you've got a board that has sodium memory installed, you've maxed that out with 96 gigs of memory. How do you go further than that, especially if you want to run more virtual machine workloads? Well, I really like the idea and the viability of installing something like Intel Optane into a Proxmox host and you've got that ultra fast swap storage when you do that and that allows you to fully saturate your system memory but still have the feel and performance feel and scalability of more than the physical memory you have installed. And I have seen in my testing that these virtual machines respond and work as if they have no issues with physical memory. So hopefully this helps you guys to see what the possibilities are when you install something like Intel Optane in a Proxmox host. I think this is a great way for home lab environments to make the absolute most out of your hardware. You can find Intel Optane storage on eBay for relatively cheap. And arguably, Intel Optane is less expensive off of eBay or other sources than buying a dense Sodem DDR5 module that you can install in your mini PC or uh, server build such as I have here. It's undeniable that the Optane storage of system swap helps with this blistering performance that allows this Proxmox server, even with just 48 gigs of memory installed, to perform like it has 128 gigs of memory.
Now the results were pretty amazing. It allowed more VMs to run beyond the physical RAM installed. The system remained responsive throughout and the swappiness tuning improved performance exponentially. You might be wondering, how does this compare to VMware's NVMe memory tiering? Well, both solutions use ultra-fast NVMe storage as an extension of system memory, but they work differently. Proxmox Swap on Intel Optane acts as extended swap space for the host. This helps to free up RAM, but it's still slower than true RAM. But it's actually, as we saw in the steps before, it's simple to configure with just a few command line configuration steps. Now, VMware's NVMe memory tiering acts as actual memory, not just swap. And you can see that in the VMware ESXi interface. We can extend up to 400% of system memory. They are comparable. However, VMware has taken this a bit further with some more intelligence in the background, at least according to the architecture. So is running Intel Optane SSD storage as swap space in Proxmox worth it? Well, I think absolutely it is, especially if you're limited on memory and you have perhaps an Intel Optane SSD lying around, or you simply just want to purchase one off of eBay or Amazon. In many cases, it is still less expensive than actually buying system memory. And maybe you're already maxed out on system memory. Let's say you have 96 gigs of SODIMM memory that currently maxes out what we have available on the market. You can install this Intel Optane SSD storage as super fast swap that gives you the feel of having more system memory installed when you actually don't physically have that installed in your system. Now, what are the pros and cons of this? Well, the pros are it's relatively cheap to extend memory using this approach by simply extending your swap space on Intel Optane storage. It also helps you to run more virtual machines in Proxmox, and it's ultra fast storage keeps swap efficient. Now, what about the cons? Well, swap is still not real memory, and the latency is still much higher with physical storage than it is with today's ultra fast DDR5 system memory. And the performance impact under extreme memory pressure can still be felt. However, I do think this is a viable option, especially for home labs where you want to conserve on your spend on hardware, you're limited on physical memory, perhaps running a mini PC with SODIMM memory that maxes out at 96 gigs, or you have other use cases or testing and playing around that you just simply want to do with that swap space in Proxmox. How about you? Have you tried Intel Optane Storage for Swap or VMware Memory Terry? Let me know in the comments. If you have a home lab question or challenge, hit me up in the VHC forums where myself and others in the community can help out. Check out the build of materials for my recent Proxmox home server build in 2025, and I have all the links to the hardware in the description for this video. Well, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.